Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Green, and with me is my wife, Dee. As we continue to work our way back, we believe the first thing to get back to is prayer. After 40 years of ministry, we know that prayer changes things. You're not alone. If you need prayer, call the MTC Christ is Center prayer line. Or submit your prayer request online, mtcfc.org. Remember, Remember, we're we're here here for for you, and and we've got your back. Well, praise the Lord. Hey, here we are. Happy New Year. It's almost 2022. You ought to lift up your voice like a trumpet and give God some praise, some celebratory praise in this place today. Come on, because he's been good to you from January all the way down here to December. Come on, lift up your voice right now in the sanctuary where you are, Facebook, YouTube. Come on, take a moment and praise his name because the Lord is good and he's greatly to be praised. Amen. Welcome to More Than Conquerors Faith Church. Amen. Well, Apostle Steve Green is our senior pastor. Our first lady is Minister Deidre Green. We're here tonight to lift up a celebration of praise in the sanctuary as we get ready to cross over or pass over into 2022. We're doing this celebration based on Numbers chapter 10 when God summoned with the trumpet, the elders, the intercessors, the, the, the musicians, the, the psalmist, amen, the intercessors, and he called them together as they prepare to take their journey to the next place. We're getting ready to go into a place in 2022 that we have not gone before. So as you do this, they lifted up the standards, amen. Judah went first, amen, and the rest of the congregation followed them. So join us with your praise, your celebration, as we lift up the standards and give him all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor.
up there. Come on, give God praise. Wherever you may be, got to give him the praise, got to give it up. Come on.
wherever you are, say something sweet to him. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for bringing us to this very day. All year it's been rough for some. It's been easy for others. But we bless God. And we're going to let his praises rise. Oh, God, we honor your name.
that's a precious place to start the year thinking back over my call my life so expresses the heart's desire I never wanted to be the biggest the greatest the popular don't want to be the largest all I ever wanted that's all I ever wanted. All my life, that's all I ever wanted. That's all I ever wanted. All I ever wanted. All I want. I still want it. For you to be glorified. If nobody ever knows my name, all I still want, even in 2022, is for you, you to be glorified. If you get the glory, you said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. All I want is for you in 2022 in everything I do in every place I go uh, in every word I say uh, in every service uh, in every project uh, in every part of my life uh, personally, family, ecclesiastically for you to be glorified you to be glorified come on now Feel the anointing. You and God right there. You and God right there. Come on, Anthony. Come on, Chris. I feel the weight of God right there. I feel the weight of God right there. All we want.
glory rise, let praise arise on the inside, on the inside, let praise arise. That's what you're saying, let praise arise. I don't know what they're doing in New York. I don't know what they're doing in New Orleans. I don't know what they're doing in California. But in this place, Jehovah Makedes, Jehovah Jireh, El Elio, Most High God. celebration spirit of the living God fall fresh upon us now send us times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord the apostle Peter declares in Acts chapter 3 in the midst of COVID times Omicron times you promised in the opening chapters of the book of Acts chapter 3 you said you would send us times of refreshing times of recovery from the effects of the heat and that kind of refreshing would come from the presence of the Lord Amen Amen Greetings I before I turn these singers loose, happy new year 2022, we'll be talking about never forsaken. With all that we've seen in 2019, 2020, it would be easy to surmise that God has abandoned his very creation. But from the onset, in 2022, the word of the Lord all year as a key thought will be out of Psalm 22. My God. My God. Why? Hast thou forsaken me? Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, why? Does it seem that you're so far from helping us? We still experiencing disasters and all kinds of things you told us in 2021 out of Luke that there would be still epidemics that you would turn it around and you did that and as we reflect God that before we move further let me before we move further here I think would be in a tragedy, tragedy and a travesty to move forward without looking backwards to thank God for what he has done. Give thanks. As I look at the year in review, uh, there were just quickly, uh, I call them the top 22 terms that we had to come to terms with 
on the screen there that we these things are just resonate in our spirit we had to learn these terms if we could bring them up if that's possible as the praise arise we had to learn the term mitigation we had to learn what covid and delta and omicron and and and, and surges and spikes and exposure we had to learn about whether we were negative or positive we uh, had to learn number eight terms uh, like infectious and contagious spreads and hospitalizations going up and deaths some dying uh, we had to be reminded of the importance of virtual service like we're doing now uh, yes we had to learn words uh, not only about virtual uh, and remote but even about um, exhaustion and fatigue and stimulus checks and all that kind of stuff and tax credits every now and then look in my face I know that the numbers are great but every now and then uh, I want you to look I don't want it to be just uh, 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 pictures there we had to learn all these terms uh, about uh, exposed and boosters and quarantine and shutdown and ventilations and mask and, and temperature and uh, social distances all of these things we've had to come to grips with but that is not how the story ends. within three days uh, he rose again uh, and just in looking back on our next slide as we move forward there were some events that I want to remind you about the faithfulness of God why we need the glory I was just looking at some key events I was watching the year review on the national news and as we bring those up these are some of the key events uh, that happened an insurrection in our capital in January and, and Travis Scott concert people just trying to go to entertainment and died maybe y'all have forgot about these things and buildings in, in Florida collapsed some of the vacation spots but we're still here we made it through it somebody talk to me uh, uh, a building collapsing and uh, 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 not long ago the southeast was ravaged with tornadoes killing 90 people in five different states and the tornado stayed on the ground come on somebody and you wonder why we in the house of God uh, come on Omicron uh, uh, lifted his ugly head when we thought Delta and was gone and, and the Amazon employees dying at the end of the year from tornadoes oh my god uh, but as I move what I want to do now uh, I want to enter the proper way uh, we want to give thanks unto God we want to tell God thank you uh, there were 10 lepers uh, that got healed but only one came back to say thank you when we look at all those things that we've had to come to grips with uh, we want to say thank you God for wisdom uh, but when we didn't know what to do uh, you gave us wisdom wisdom is insight on how to get out of it uh, we want to thank you for the provision the needs, the jobs that we didn't shut down. We were allowed to work from home. Come on, somebody. All oh, our needs. Uh, we were not foreclosed. We kept our churches. Uh, we want to thank you to God for uh, all of, uh, of the protection it is. Uh, that's protection. I'm sorry. Protection. You was our shield. You was a protection for us. He was a shield for us. Maybe we've forgotten about it. God, we thank you that you protect us and gave us a country to live in. Our very democracy was at attack. Third world countries would love to be in a place, land of the free home of the brave. We got some issues, uh, but the enemy tried to seize our capital, y'all. Then just thanking you for life, for just health, breathing. We thank you for our families personal family we thank you for our children and we thank you for sanity that with all of this that happened we still clothe in our right minds and the last thing if the anointing that we just experienced is any indication of what 2022 is going to be. We going to be all right. Ty Tribbett said we going to be all right. <laughs> we going to be all right. If that anointing. That pure worship that just came forth. That's God's. Installment. And down payment. That if he. Give us the kind of anointings. That we had last year. All year long next year then the burden that is on 
our neck shall be destroyed right before the word you're all I want you're all you're all I ever need you're still you're all I want Help me to know, help me know, with all that we experienced in 2020, 2021, we want to tell you, you're still all, right wherever you are, I want. Right where you are, in your home, in your car, with these electronics, you may be in a bar in another country, will you tell him, you're all I ever, I ever need. Yeah, I thought I needed a lot of things. I thought I couldn't live without. You're all I want. As I prepare to break the bread of life, help me, help me know you. You've never left me. You've never forsaken me. You've never abandoned me. Help me say it one last time, y'all. Like I've forgotten that you are still here. Help me know you are And all the people of God said, Amen. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this room. Thank you so much to the singers, to the band, and to the standards team, Elder Thompson and all the elders and intercessors that did the Numbers 10. I would dare not try to go on a journey, Numbers 10 says. Whenever they moved into the next dimension, they were 40 years in the wilderness, but every time they broke camp and went into another year, the book of Numbers, no matter what the numbers were, they were having diseases, even in the book of Numbers in the wilderness. Got a slight ring or something going in my monitor here. I don't know quite what that is. But uh, they always lifted up a standard. Always lifted up a standard. Amen. Send you the first. So all those standards, yes. All those standards had a, um, a word on them you saw there. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard. Let's get into the word of the Lord because... Man, thank you, Cam, and all of you guys. You are excellent, uh, Tony. Oh, man shall not live, not by, not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We want to live and not die. Amen. So, I've been spending some time in prayer about this message, and I want to get right into it. I believe it's going to bless you in a very good way here. Amen. Uh, I want to, for the next Holy Ghost moments, talk from the thought as we'll bring that topic up never forsaken never forsaken I want that to resonate in your mind all year long never forsaken and uh, because we've been so 
boxed in and shut in and couldn't get to work, into church, into schools. Well, I believe this is going to be the year that we're going to be out of the box. Out of the box. Amen. You want to type in, I'm out of the box. And I'll talk about the different kind of boxes that exist. But in order to be out of the box, I believe this is going to be a year of boxing. Boxing. Somebody said, why you always like to talk about sports? I know there is an apostolic call on my life. And in order to explain the warfare that was going on, the Apostle Paul, I dare not put myself on that level, but I'm paying attention on how he ministered. And when he tried to explain spiritual warfare to a carnally minded, physically minded people, sports minded people, throughout all of his writings, whether in Ephesians or in Hebrews, uh, he would always use the cultural terms for them to understand that. He would try to explain that when it comes to our warfare and crisis, having to know to stand, he says, we wrestle not, right? If you're going to understand winning warfare, you must put on the whole arm of God for we wrestle to pin the enemy down. So he gave us the metaphor of a wrestler. And there were times when we knew that we were in a race or having to face racial issues as in the 21st century, and that we would have to understand the stamina of a runner. Amen. That we must lay aside every weight that does so easily beset us. And we must run this race with patience looking unto Jesus. But he didn't just stop with the wrestler and their honor. He talked about marksmanship. Hunters. He said, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind me, I press toward the mark marksmanship of the prize of the highest calling that's in Christ Jesus. But in this particular case uh, tonight, uh, we want to steal a, a page from the Apostle Paul. I believe that if we're going to win, uh, this is going to be a year of boxing, uh, boxing, but uh, or the year of the boxer. But don't just think about the boxer that's in a ring. Uh, Think about all kind of box where people have boxed you in or they got thick gifts in the box that just ain't come to you. Or there are box cars uh, as it relate to freight train and uh, come on somebody. And those of you that are computer savages, like uh, uh, savvy, uh, you uh, have the uh, proclivity and uh, you have the ability to uh, go into your computer and uh, find out that you got some inboxes. There's some messages that you hadn't even checked yet. And I Come to tell you, I, I believe that I want to enter into your box tonight and tell you some things that you haven't checked out yet. Amen? So uh, I'm, I'm calling this a, a year of boxing. Yeah, there, in my introductory thought before I go to the key scripture, I, I literally say this, if you can go there. Uh, there's a statement in the introduction that says, This year will be a year of being delivered from being boxed in you know we've been boxed in uh, can't come to church and boxed in can't go to the concert we've been enclosed in but i think this is the year we're coming out of the box amen we've been boxed in uh, but however though we've been boxed in it will take a, a the art of boxing uh, to secure this prize that God wants to give you. There is an art to it. And we would get into all of the mentions of boxing. So we're not wrestling this year. We're not running this year. We're not pressing. We're just going to learn how to box. We'll have to steal a couple of pages from as we look uh, uh, historically, Carrie. I'm sure you'll appreciate. As we go through time, we understand that our history is filled with some serious kind of boxers. Am I right? I ain't going to even talk yet about the uh, box shorts. Uh, I ain't uh, well, I will leave that alone. Yeah, I'll leave that alone. But uh, boxers, that was the, uh, 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 you know, uh, the, uh, the, the, the brown bomber, the big bomber that they hit up back in Joe Louis back in the days. And there was a, there was a Spinks brother. 
models. They were boxing in the Olympics, right? Remember back, am I going back too far? One of them, I think, didn't even have no teeth, but them boys could fight, couldn't they? And then there was a, a you know, sometime God goes international with boxes. That was Teofilo Stevens. He was a Cuban. Communism was reigning, and they wouldn't let much people do much in Cuba, but he was their prize. He represented them as a boxer. Then we work our way up to the pretty boy, Muhammad Ali. Uh, boy, he said, I can do what now? Float like a butterfly, and I'm going to sting you like a bee. <laughs> Amen. And let's not forget uh, Mike Tyson. He'll bite your ear off. Amen. And, and what he would say, uh, everybody got a plan. Until they get hit in the mouth. We all didn't have plans and re resolutions. But uh, uh, Mike Tyson tells us, you, you got to plan what you're going to be. But if the devil ever hits you in your mouth, you better know how to box. Amen. Let's not even stop by even holy people getting in boxing. That was one name, Evander. What now? Holy field, baby. Because if you're going to win this fight, you're going to have to be on, on a holy field. I, I think I rest my case here. We must understand. We'll deal with some of the other things that relates to boxing. If you think this is not spiritual truth, we will walk our way uh, everywhere from, uh, uh, you know, what we call this uh, not only uh, uh, the year of the boxer, but uh, uh, it's also uh, called the, the boxing ring, the boxing ring, uh, the boxing ring. Uh, 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 from January uh, 1 to uh, December 31st, imagine that being a boxing ring. And there's so much we can learn from the boxing ring. I'm about to go into 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 27, where he's going to use the word boxing. Where he's going to say, I keep under my body like a boxer. Bring it into subjection, lest when I preach to others, I myself should become a castaway. No, you will not be a castaway and you sure will not be in a casket thrown away. But when you get in that boxing ring, if you understand a boxing ring, there are all kind of things that prepares you for it. One of the things is if you can't afford it, if it's not on regular TV, they have it on some called home box. Okay, there's home box or pay-per-view. But then once you get in there, uh, there is a, on the ring, there is a rope around the, the ring. The word hope means to tie a rope uh, and do like Muhammad Ali did and just do the rope for those. Just hang in there. You're exhausted. You're tired. You're weary. But you let the enemy just waste all his punches. But you are saving your energy to knock the enemy out. I wish I had time. Uh, but not only uh, is there the rope, uh, there's also the canvas right the floor is called the canvas it's not carpet it's not hardwood I think it's called canvas when I think about canvas uh, I always think about uh, the floor I always think about somebody sketching something drawing something uh, I want to tell you that this is the year that God is sketching you you are his workmanship uh, you are the poema of God God's drawing your picture on the canvas and the thing about the canvas is sometimes while you're boxing, you get knocked down on the ground, uh, on the canvas. Uh, but the Spirit of God uh, can get you back up off the floor, off the canvas, and say, this is not the picture. Oh, we understand all that. The year of the boxing ring. Not only the boxing ring there, uh, there's also uh, in the boxing ring, the boxer has to have on a set of gloves on his hand. Boxing gloves. There's certain things you are not going to be able to win with your bare hands. You're going to need something covering your hands so that when your hand run out, you ain't really even hitting them with your hands. You're hitting them with another set of gloves. But not only that, uh, in boxing, uh, there's uh, what's known uh, as uh, a, a, a trainer. And the trainer there, you need somebody in the corner that while you are fighting, they're watching to see if you got enough stamina, right? I think with Muhammad Ali, his name was Angelo Dundee, right? Uh, a famous trainer. Who's training you? Who's watching to see if your eye is swelling, if your attitude is bad? had a trainer in every other round he go back into I don't care what kind of worldwide ministry or business you got when do you go back into my next term the corner or the cornerstone because that's where the trainer is because in that corner every what like three minutes they go in the corner he uh, give him a little squig of water slap him on the face a little bit eye all swollen and what he tell him get back out there the year of the boxer the corner 
the cornerstone. But the thing I like about it is there is a bell. <laughs> right? When you get started, there's a bell. At the end of every round, there is a bell. God help us to hear the bells ringing. Not on Christmas. Bells will be ringing. No, not that. I'm talking about the Sunday bells. They say, it's Sunday morning. It's time for you to get in the house of God. It's time for you to go to school. I know you dropped out, but the bell is ringing. But not only the bell. At the end of that box, that boxing match, there is a verdict and a decision. But guess what? The one that is boxing <laughs> does not make the decision. You should. What'd you say? Yes. No, you're boxing, but the decision of whether you want a, a, a loss is not yours. If you didn't just completely knock the enemy on the canvas and knock it out of the park, then you must win by a TKO, a tactical knockout. And some of you did knock it out of the park, and it looked like in 2021 you lost, but you are not the judge. The fact that you are still alive means you're still in the, I call it, the boxing ring. Not ring alone as in border. That won't let anybody else. Because can't nobody get in the ring but you. Even the trainers outside of the ring. Even your fans are outside of the ring. You in this ring. Your wife can't get in the ring with you. Your pastor can't get in the ring with you. Your baker can't get in the ring with you. But your father is the judge. But the ring I'm talking about is when you win, you get a boxing ring. You get a ring. What's a boxing ring? I mean, God's married to you. A ring. You get a boxing ring. That means you get a call from a place you never thought it was coming from. Somebody's texting you. Why don't you type in, this is the year of my boxing ring. With all that I've been through, I'm ready in 2022 for my ring. Because though it looked like I lost, I did not lose I am still in the ring. Now, let's jump into a key, couple of key scriptures here. And I don't want to bore you here to, for us to learn how to not wrestle, not how to run when things are not going right, uh, but to learn how to box. I may just uh, do the, the, the fourth one first, but here are the key scriptures that you will find. You'll find these scriptures here. Yes, uh, thank you so much. You'll find these scriptures, key scriptures out of Psalm chapter 22. Now, a little bit later, I'm just going to completely break down the 22 dimension. You see on the screen, Psalm 22 is going to talk about you're never forsaken. Isaiah 62, God's going to say, you know what, I'm going to give you a new name here. In 62, you're going to pick it up around verse 4, 62 and 4 and verse 12, 62, 4 and 12. It's going to talk about God's about to turn some things around there in Isaiah 62, where God says you, uh, you'll, you'll, be, you'll learn the, what I call the new terms, T-E-R-M-S, the terms. Not to turn things are turned, but the terms, T-E-R-M-S, terms, terms in Isaiah 62. He says, because you will no longer be termed forsaken. Your city will no longer be termed forsaken. That's what we're watching in Birmingham with all of the legacy arena and all that. We prophesied this for years. Uh, you will no longer be termed. You'll have sporting events. Uh, uh, Birmingham Barons moving back uptown and all of the UAB, our city is on the rise. And then in 1 Samuel chapter uh, number 22, it will talk about, of course, key being 1 Samuel 22, 22, 422, the 3D effect that so many people are going through right now. And then 1 Corinthians 9, 27, which we'll really look at first, we'll talk about the boxing analogy. And 2 Corinthians 4 will let us know that we are all trouble on every side. The world is trouble on every side. North, west, east, south, orient. Come on, somebody. It doesn't matter. North America, South America. We're trouble on every side, in your office, your neighbors, but we are not distressed. We are persecuted, but we are not forsaken, never forsaken. Amen. Perplexed, don't know what we're going to do, but not in despair is what 2 Corinthians would say. That would be the last scripture there. So let's pick it up with um, 
Let's go ahead and start with Psalm 22, since that's going to be the key thought about never forsaken with an exclamation point. In, in Psalm 22, and then we'll go to 1 Corinthians 9. In Psalm 22, verse 1, Jesus is on the cross. He's lived for 30 years, three years. He's preparing for ministry. But the last part, before he is exalted, all he ever wanted was for God to be lifted up. So he said, Father, I delight to do thy will. Well, if God was going to be glorified, God was going to be lifted high, then this would be the last act that he would have to do. Here's his conversation on the cross, which certainly applies to every one of us in what we are experiencing. He says, my God, my God, why has thou, here's the word, never forsaken, forsaken me? Don't, it's not a bunch of hows or, or whos or what. He's not asking any what questions. He's just asking why. Why art, why have thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? You're going to help me, but you hadn't, you hadn't helped me so far. He's going to help me, but he ain't helped me so far. Not yet. Or it looked like God is only willing to help you so far <laughs> don't look like he, he's helped me all the way but only so far why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring in other words when i asked you to help me i wouldn't just say lord bless me no i was hollering at god somebody said the reason with pastor i don't like all this screaming but when you feel like god's not there your words will be roaring to god jesus <laughs> He says, why didn't you help me when I start roaring like a lion? Next part, it goes on to say, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? He says, oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, thou hearest not. And in the night season, even then, I wasn't silent. I had a praise there, but you still didn't help me. But he goes on to say, but even with all of that, looking like God has forsaken me for two years, Personally, nationally, financially, socially, here's the conclusion. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. The best thing a country, including Israel, can do, the best thing a person can do when it looked like God had heard you is to get praise. Praise would get his attention every time. I don't know what would have happened if the whole country just decided on January the 1st, we're going to shut all secular activity down and we're just going to praise God as a country. You inhabit, not the praises, watch it on the screen, last word. You don't inhabit the praise of David. You don't inhabit the praise just of your favorite church and televangelist. No. There is what's called a national praise. He inhabits the whole praise of a nation. So if this nation don't praise him, if the president don't make a decree that every house should be praying, you should at least say, ask for me in my house, I'm going to praise him. Amen. And I promise you, praise will get him on this scene. Why do you need that? Well, 1 Corinthians Chapter 9, that box in scripture, he says, Know ye not that there are many running, trying to win a prize? But watch 1 Corinthians 9. This is the boxing metaphor. We don't know how far we're going to get, but we're going we're gonna to work this thing here. Amen? In 1 Corinthians, he says, But I keep under my body. <laughs> you know, your body has been under attack. But your spirit said, I'm going to stay under this body. You're not going to heaven yet. COVID's not taking you out. I'm going to keep under my body. I'm glad the real me is under my body. I, the real I, is my spirit man. I keep, watch this, on the screen, under my body, that's my spirit, and I bring my body into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, watch this, when I have preached to others, when I have sang to others, that's preaching, when I have prayed for others, when I have given to others, when I have helped others, then I myself should be a castaway, a throwaway. But I found out I'm really not a castaway. I'm just one castaway from Hollywood. 
just the right cast. You're just waiting on the right cast to come help you. <laughs> but Jesus must be the star. Now watch the Amplified. You see this box in here. Now he's already talking about winning the prize. This is the year of the ring. This is the year of the ring. A boxer has to have a ring. So some of you that are single, you already hear the ring. That's your husband. You hear the ring. Your doorbell ring. You hear the ring. Come on, somebody. The ringing in your ear, ears and your, your homeostasis and, and all your head, you know, all of your gait and your balance is off because it's ringing in your head. But this is the year of the ring. He says in the Amplified, but like what? Talk to me. Like what? Like what now? Like a boxer. Paul is trying to explain to this gifted church, Corinth. It was the most gifted of his churches. Galatia was dealing with, uh, you know, legalism. Colossae was dealing with intellectualism. And James was dealing with faith, uh, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, Ephesians was dealing with warfare, uh, the, the Ephesians and Ephesus. But in Corinth... Uh, Corinthians said this, they, they were so gifted, they came behind in no gift. Matter of fact, they had even had uh, nine other gifts. They had the gift of, uh, of faith, and they had the gift of, of, of prophecy and, and miracles. They were gifted. But in, with all of their gifting, they, they understood communion in 1 Corinthians 11. They understood in chapter 1 that they would come behind in no gift. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 2, this church called Corinth understood what eye hath not seen, uh, what ears has not heard. They understood this very well. In chapter 3, they understood that their body was the temple of God. And in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, they says, uh, you know, that God made us stewards over the mysteries of God. So moreover, it's required of, uh, that we be faithful. In chapter 5, it talks about that had all kind of incidents going on immoral acts uh, incest in their church in chapter 6 he says uh, he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit they understood all this uh, uh, but when you get to chapter 9 he starts talking about if you're going to win you must understand that you must treat your body like a boxer so a boxer in order to get ready for the fight he can't wait until he step into the ring he can't wait until he gets the invitation. He can't wait until they call him. It's the preparation before the fight that determines whether you win the fight. So it's not what you do when you get the call. It's not what you do when you get married. It's not what you do if you start a church. It's how you're handling others behind the ring. So the boxer, he, he uh, keeps on his body, right? He's, he's on a running. Uh, you know, he's jogging. He's getting in shape. Uh, he's building up his stamina. If just in case, he has to go 15 rounds because just like in a boxing match, everything that you're fighting for is, is, is not going to be won in the first round. Some of these demons don't go. They're stubborn. But you got to get your stamina just in case you have to fast and pray and stay in the narrow way. So, you know, he's running. He's training. He's exercising. He's watching his diet, both naturally and spiritually. You can't eat off anybody's table because they'll tell you you're in the wrong weight. One of the things a boxer understood is you can't put me in the wrong class in the wrong division don't send me to a, a, a lightweight welterweight church when I'm a heavyweight kabod kind of preacher does that make sense? Yeah, I'm fighting heavyweight. Somebody said, well, why you, you got to preach so long? Why you got to sing? Because I'm not in a lightweight faith. I'm not a welterweight. The weight of God is called the kabod of God. It's the weight of God. And I hate to say it, but not that I'm any better, but, you know, I'm determined like a marksman to get in the heavyweight because I got heavy burns. But I'm going to let Jesus do all the heavy lifting. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are what? Heavy laden. You ain't light laden, so why do you want a light salad anointing? The devil's coming at you with everything. You getting this, right? It's a heavyweight fight, man. It's heavyweight. The things that we're facing, that I listed, that happened, you can't get, go to a concert without dying and somebody saying, stop the concert. But the one that's doing it so busy, and they don't even hear you. Are you going on a retreat in Florida just assuming that your favorite vacation spot that the, is secure, but maybe it had been checked, so you are really at the mercy of God. You don't know if you're going to get on a plane and they're going to get to fight and attack the cabin or not. So it ain't guaranteed that you're going to all those vacation spots. Am I right? So you got to keep under your body. Get it trained. Exercise. Watch your diet. You can't eat off everybody's table. 
You can't go to social media and check out what everybody's saying because it will contaminate your spirit. And all of a sudden, you get in the fight of your life. And now you don't have the stamina to go one round. One person say something out of the way, and you quit. You down. You out. I should told me to sit in the wrong place. Hired somebody else over me. I put in a proposal for my house. It rejected three times. Well, if you have been training out the word of God, you know the prophet would tell you, go seven times. You may not see nothing the first time if you're right. You may not see nothing, but God will never leave you. He says, I go to prepare a place for you in my father's house. There are many mansions there. So like a boxer, we keep it under subjection, handling it roughly. Sometimes you got to handle your body roughly. Yes, you're going to fast and pray. Yes, you're going to stay uh, up uh, uh, and wait while Pastor Green preaching three hours. Yes, you're going to get up at midnight and, and, and hear what he got to say. Handle your body roughly. Don't let your body tell you. I handle it and I ain't going to let nobody else handle my body roughly. But I'm going to handle it roughly. Yes, you are going to get up at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yes, you are going to go to work because the, the, they didn't pay you enough. Handle your body roughly, right? Discipline it by hardships and subdue it. Wait a minute. We've seen that word before, right? That's the original word that God gave Adam. We're going to be talking about that in our financial seminar in January. How to replenish the earth, right? Yes, we're talking about going from ownership from hardship to ownership and financial. The paving the road to success. How do I go from hardship to being the owner? I got to learn how to subdue. God told Adam in Genesis 1, he said, I made you in my image. I've given you dominion over the works of my hand. I want you to subdue the earth. Subdue it means to conquer it. Using all its vast resources. That word subdue. Now, if you uh, fast forward that word subdue, you see it in conjunction with boxing. It says you are subdue your body. Subdue it. Fear that after producing, watch this, and proclaiming to others the gospel, all those gospel things pertaining to you, if you don't handle that next page, uh, not stand, then it says, not, not handle it myself. I should become unfit. Wait a minute, unfit? Last thing you want to do is get in the boxer ring and your opponent is in good shape. <laughs> but you ain't fit. I'm unfit, he says, that you should become unfit. That is, not stand the test, but be unapproved and rejected as a counterfeit. Now we've heard about counterfeit money and you can fool some people with counterfeit, right? Counterfeit, you put that money that don't fit in the uh, U.S. government over that counter, but everybody ain't fooled by the anointing of God. You don't ever want to be a counterfeit because you can't cash in off counterfeit. You cannot cash in legally. You may look like you fit. You may have all the theology right. You may have all the education right. You may have all the contacts right. But if you're not handling your body roughly, if you're never sacrificing, you will not be in the ring. You might end up in a box. A pine box, that is. But I proclaim that this is the year that you're coming out of the box. That you should live and not die. Amen. 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 Okay. So, key scripture there. Psalm 22 and 1 Corinthians 9. Isaiah 62. The terms. Now, we talked about all these terms earlier. Mitigated. But watch Isaiah 62. Four. This is one for our land. And one for our city. Uh, we'll pick it up in Isaiah 62. Right around verse 3 or 4. Where it says you will no longer be termed forsaken. Or you will no longer be called desolate. Watch this. Thou shalt no more be 
term. That gave you 22 terms we had to learn. Mitigate, spiking, exposure, you know what I'm saying? Social distancing. We had to learn all those terms. Well, hear me. You will know more. You are determined. You're the terminator. <laughs> you will no longer, no more, be termed what? Capital. Forsaken. As if God forsook you, capitalized, forsaken. Neither shall your land anymore be termed desolate. That's worth dropping the mic in 22. Isaiah 62. <laughs> this is worth dropping the mic. Talking about never forsaken. Number one, personally, you shall no longer be termed forsaken because God will never forsake you. But not only will he not forsake you, but your land. What land are you living in? United States? Uh, are you living in the Southeast? You live in Alabama? What county you live in? What house? What's your resident? Your land, your house, your church will never be called desolate. Oh, thank you. I hear amen's all in play. Not desolate. Amen. You're not late. You're, you're not deserted. You're not abandoned. You will no longer be called. You were called that, uh, but you shall be called. Watch this. But you shall be called. The fact is, somebody going to call you some, and somebody going to call you. Thou shalt be called a uh, Hepzibah. <laughs> well, what a word. And your land shall be called Beulah. I used to hear back in the quartetters and little, some of the little country churches, you go and they be singing, Beulah land. <laughs> you ever heard of Beulah land. I said, what in the world are they talking about? Now, they, it wasn't quite R&B. It wasn't Jane Cleveland. But I tell you what, they had the revelation right. What we need to call America, what we need to call the streets, what we need to call your address is Hepzibah and Beulah Land. Watch this. Hepzibah and your land. Uh, we'll have that in Amplify. Shall be because the Lord delights in you. Now you can't be called Beulah Land. Now, here we come. Here I'm gonna throw a little shade here, America. If the Lord don't delight in what you're doing, if He don't delight in you, because if you delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. What I wish is COVID was gone. What I wish is I had. Wait a minute. But uh, Beulah Land means the Lord delights in you. He, and when he delights in you, he marries your land. He has a covenant with your land. He never forsakes your land. All right. Happy New Year. The word of the Lord never forsaken. I'm talking about the year of the boxer. The boxing ring. I'm painting a picture. Can I have the Amplified Bible? These are terms, uh, you know, we can shout anytime. But I need you to know somebody, some prophet need to tell us. As we're going to see in 1 Samuel 22 and in 1 Samuel 30. David is in 1 Samuel 22. And they got a 3D thing. Everybody in there is in debt, distress, and discontent. And he's going to say, let me leave my mother and father in the hold in a stronghold in the box in clothes I'm going to leave them I'm going to put them on hold until I know what the Lord's getting ready to do I'll go there in a moment but then he's going to say he went to inquire of Gad the prophet to find out how do I get out of this box this hold this stronghold he became a captain and a leader and a czar in first samuel 22 in 2022 over a, a, a group of men army and leaders that all had the same thing that you my family your family your country your neighbors got three things we're battling in 22 we're going to see debt discontent and distress and when you're in that predicament you need a captain to be in the hold with you in the box we don't know when we coming out of this somebody say when we coming out of COVID oh no but you better have a prophet in your midst I know that all right you Judah you Judah MTC you're not Naphtali wrestling it's not a wrestling the sons of Jacob. You're not Dan judging you, Judah. You, those that love to be wild and radical with your praise and you bringing standards and she'll box and all that. You, Judah, shall no more be termed what? 
forsake him. Nor shall your land be called what? Desolate. Anymore. But you shall be called Hephzibah. What does that mean? That's a big word. My delight is in her. My delight. Do you know what happens if you mess around and start getting likes from God out of your Facebook? <laughs> you don't need but one big like. Oh, but we're so busy trying to look out and how many people like my Facebook. You don't need but one like. God made you in the likeness of him. You don't need but one like. And if God likes you, you're going to win the ring. Fred, not yourself because of evildoers. Neither be envious against the workers of, a, of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down. Delight yourself in the Lord. I'm not the sharpest pencil in the deck. I'm not the smartest one. I'm not the most holy. I'm not the largest. But I do know this. If God likes you, you ain't for a setup. You ain't got to fret, not yourself because of evildoers, and don't be enemies against the work of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down. I found out this. The more I like God, the more he brought me. I like praise. I like preaching. I like church. I like everything about spiritual. And it's obvious he's just about giving me, yes, I like Mercedes. I have a whole lot of things I like. He gave me everything I like that I can't afford because it's reciprocal. How much you like God? How much you like prayer? How much? You, somebody said, I like food. It's obvious you do it all the time. I like playing cards. You do it all the time. But you don't like God enough and that's why you don't have some of the desires of your heart. And he would go on to say in Psalm 37, I've been young, but now I'm old or older. But I have never seen, I'm right here, right in my eyes, right here, right here. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. I have never, that word, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. I have never seen, there's a whole lot of people that look like God forsook but I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken but not only you nor his seed beg break type in I will never be forsaken and my seed and my children pastors my spiritual seed will never beg you will not be in the flock of, of Jesus Christ under the chief shepherd and pastor green the under shepherd and beg for anything my seed will never beg bread they ain't boasting that's just the word y'all I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken. It's tied into the light. You will not be called forsaken, nor your land d d desolate. But Hephzibah, my delight is in her. Every woman ought to shout right now. My delight is in her. My delight is in her. God likes her, for she's a brick. She's not a brick house. She's a, she's a stone house. Brick is Egyptian cheap labor that falls apart. Right? Because the mortar starts coming together. You ain't just a brick. Don't you love the way the temple was built? The temple was not built out of, out of brick. Built out of stones. And God told them in Kings, go get some stones. And put them together. And they will be so tightly fit together that you would not have to in any ways put any mortar See, your problem with your destiny, the reason it's falling apart, is you got cement and not stone. You got mortar in between your job and your career, and it's coming, it's coming apart at the seams. God never says in 1 Peter 2, as lively bricks build the spiritual. He calls you a lively stone. Okay, let's reverence it. Isaiah 28, right, finish it with me. I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone. A precious, a tried stone. A precious cornerstone. I used to think coming up, because we had wood houses, and we had siding. I said, one day we're going to get us a brick house. <laughs> I thought that was the top of the line. Brick house. Until you enlarge your territory, and you go over the mountain, and you start seeing, their house has got stone in it. God never builds out of brick. 
because it has to have something in between it to hold it together. Jesus is holding you together. It says, you will not be turned forsaken, nor shall your land be called desolate anymore. But you shall be called Hephzibah, my delight is in her, women of God, and your land shall be called Beulah. What does that mean? Now, I'm going to drop the mic, I think. I, I want to anyway. Beulah land. What does that mean? Married. For the Lord delights in you. Now, you already know, women of God, ain't no man getting ready to marry you if he don't like you. <laughs> I don't care. I mean, he may. I don't know, let me say the wrong thing. He may take you to bed, but that don't mean he like you. He may take you to dinner, but that don't mean he really, really like you. But when God likes you, he marries. And God has married to America. He was married, but I think America got a divorce. I think we separated ourselves. I think we walked out on God. We traded God out for something else. No longer in God we trust. One time God liked the way we, God bless America. Now we only sing it when we get in trouble. That means, Beulah land means it's, that land, God is married to that land. He owns that land. That means anything goes on. He ain't leasing. If you're leasing a land, then you're responsible. Then, you know, somebody else is responsible. But when, when you're the owner, it's your responsibility. God so owns you that anything that goes on with you, he repairs it. He takes care of it because he's got ownership. He's got ownership. He owns your sicknesses. He owns up to your troubles. He owns up to your critics. He owns up to your mistakes. He's going to fix it. People of land and all the people of God said, amen. Now, 1 Samuel 22, the time's going to run out. I'll barely get into this message here. I'm talking about like a boxer. But you've got to keep on while God's owning it, God's protecting it, God's repairing it, God's paving a way for you. You've got to just keep on spying. You know, sometimes in a boxing match, they have what's called a spying partner. Am I right? That, that, ain't, that ain't your real opponent. You get somebody, some of you don't know that you are on jobs with uh, bosses that are mean because that ain't going to be your boss for real. That's just your spying partner getting you ready for the real fight. Some of them realize that your mom and your dad is your sparring partner. You look like you're fight, fight, uh, uh, fighting with them so that when you get married to a husband, uh, come on, you've been sparring. You know how to win. Does that make sense? You're just sparring right now. Your creditors, that's just your sparring partners. They handle you roughly so when you get your own business, you know how to treat your employees. It's called sparring. So you can't get somebody sparring that's weak. You got to get somebody that's sparring against you, fighting against you, that's in your own camp. They're in your camp, but they're hitting you like your enemy would hit you. But when it's time to fight, you're going to say, it's good for me that I would have been afflicted. Teach in this place, Pastor Gray. A man's foes shall be they of his own household. So if you can't take correction from your mom and daddy in the foundation of life, when you get to school, they're going to kick you out because you don't like what the principal said. And if you don't Make it through school, then you go to the, the army, and then the drill sergeant start telling everybody, left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left. But you got to do it your way. So you come up with another Caitlin. Right, 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 left, right, 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 left, right. Because you're doing your own thing because you never learned how to take orders. Boy, is this message tight? Are we getting this? Yeah. You get the ring. You're going to get the belt. They're going to raise your hand and say you won. There are some things you'll be able to knock out just like this. But I'm talking about those real, real enemies that resist you called racism, called criticism, called sexism, called schisms or cliques. Help us, Lord, to keep under our body because they don't invite my color, my kind, my right, my race, my culture. That's okay. I got a box because I, I don't fit in with the way everybody do church. Otherwise, I would be a counterfeit to not be true to myself. I'm not a counterfeit. I'm authentic. I'm genuine. If you met me 20 years ago, I was preaching two hours. I'm the real thing. I'm still preaching two hours. 
Whether we win church, out of church, I preach sweat because I'm the real thing. If it's a duck, it walks like a duck. It talks like a duck. It quacks like a duck. Did you notice that the ducks didn't stop quacking because it was COVID? Did you notice the dogs never changed their natures and started meowing because it was Omicron? We're the only thing that changed. If you're a praiser, you ought to still be praising. If you're a preacher, you ought to still be preaching. If you're a businessman because it shut down, start it all over again. If that's what you're worried, unless that's not what you are. Oh, maybe you become a castaway. All right, David. We're going to 1 Samuel 22, key scriptures. I'll have to pick this up, obviously. 1 Samuel. These are kingdom books. This is not democracy. The books of Samuel, Kings, Chronicles. Samuel deals with the prophetic aspect of it. How the prophet related to the king. David was chosen. We know that. In chapter 17, he had beat Goliath. Right? The, the prophet got some all knowing him say, you're the one. You're the least likely, but you're the one. Because they all will tell who the one is. <laughs> way back in the day, I'm going way back the way they used, used to do tires. Maybe some of us older remember this, Anthony, <laughs> when you had a tire, I ain't talking about this fixer flat, and they had an inner tube in it, and you changed the flat, and they took the inner tube, and they put it in a bucket of water, <laughs> and wherever you saw it bubbling, you knew that's where the puncture was. <laughs> wherever it was bubbling at, you knew that's where the hole is. This, my friend, is how the anointing works. David tried to put the anointing on seven sons, but it was not bubbling. The oil is lethal. Maybe I haven't anointed you because you're not bubbling. The prophet said, I know you got seven sons. And I know it looked like it operates by seniority. But the one in the field that's crazy, talking to sheep, slaying lions and bears, and he don't have a PR department behind him. He don't have a social media team. He's just praising God, killing every lion and every bear that comes against his few sheep. The prophet said, fill with the horn of oil. Go get him because the oil is not bubbling on those other boys. They're talented. They got the time. They got the connections. They got the training. They got the outfit, but they don't have no anointing. So the prophet was getting ready to leave out of the house. And he asked Jesse, do you have anybody else in the house? Because sometimes the anointing goes best to those that are not invited. Woo. Sometimes anointing flows better to those that's outside the clique. They didn't invite you to the party. <laughs> you didn't make the convention. You don't have the bishop's collar. You don't have the Dove Award. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You don't have the business license. You don't even have a building. You're just selling stuff out of your truck. You don't even have a license, but you got the anointing. But if you keep on making them pies, baby, if you keep on sewing with that sewing machine, uh, if you keep on sweeping that floor, the, uh, the, uh, the oil will find you. The oil will find you. The oil will resist those that look like they are next in line. I promise you the oil will find you. And the same time that the oil is looking for you, you better hear me in this place, it is rejecting the souls. Uh, it's rejecting those that's tall, dark, and handsome. They got the skills, but they don't have the protocol. I was listening to a sports program, and one of the, it was one of the Christmas days, I think I watched four games. It was five. I watched four. Cam, and one of the guys said, because teams were canceling their schedules, he said, um, uh, what teams were doing was canceling because they had 20 people that looked like they had called COVID, and he said, um, they were just giving way to safety protocol. And the announcer said, he's a Hall of Famer to be, he said, please don't use the word protocol no more on this broadcast. They don't want to hear nothing about protocol. They said, what well, can we call it? They just use safety precautions, safety covenants, anything but protocol. I said, man, that sounds like my business. The church don't want to hear nothing about no protocol. They want to just go straight to where they're going. Protocol said that Abinadab should be next in line. But the oil said, not so. 
the prophet on his way, grab his bags and say, wait a minute. I know God didn't send me here for nothing, just like God did not send me in 2022, that God did not send me this past year, so, uh, uh, this past week, uh, on this uh, past Wednesday, on December the 29th, uh, uh, I celebrated my 41st year of preaching. Oh, you're going to have to give it up. Hit a note, do something. Give me a crescendo, do something. I'm sorry, 41 years, just, just 41 years of preaching the gospel. I ain't been perfect, but I've been patient. I'm, I've been preaching this gospel for 41 years. They say sometimes when people get old, they feel like they have the right. You know, old people just don't say anything. <laughs> they only think they just don't talk. You know what I mean? So the older I get, the more I ain't got nothing to hold back. Because I, I fear those not that's able to kill the body, but those that are able to kill the soul. So the protocol is so important. So Solomon, Samuel was trying to follow protocol. He went through Benadab, went through seven sons. All just wasn't doing nothing. I mean, it wouldn't get no further than his head. Is it something that all supposed to be flowing from the head to the beard to the skirts down? There, the Lord coming. He said, something ain't happening. He said, these boys are cute. They, 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 they got soul anointing. He said, got anything else? He said, yeah, he's a little, uh, he's a little eccentric out there. He's a little weird there. <laughs> he's talking to the sheep, writing song about a shepherd that he ain't even met yet. Talking about the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I'm their shepherd and the Lord is my shepherd. He's talking to himself. He up in the sky writing songs to God ain't about there. He writing to God saying, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how excellent. Oh, Lord, saw me. How excellent is thy name in all the earth. You set your glory above the heaven that out of the mouth of babes thou establish what is man that thou art mindful of him. He's out there writing these songs. He, writing, he, ain't, try, he ain't trying to be at a concert. He ain't trying to go to Africa. He ain't trying to make the top billboard list. He ain't trying to be the number one preacher in the largest church. Uh, he's just out there. He's going to become a preacher. As a matter of fact, David calls him a prophet. He's a prophet psalmist. He's a prophet psalmist. And he said, Lord, Psalm 3, how are they increased that trouble me? Okay, sound like Omicron. How are they increased that trouble me? I try. How many there be that rise up against me? Many which there be say on my soul, there is no help for him in God. Psalm 3, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. Then he writes uh, in Psalm 24, those that had a bad year, lift up your heads, O ye gate, for the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Uh, the, who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. He writes in Psalm 46, He's writing all these songs. God is our refuge uh, and our strength. Uh, he's a very present help in the time of trouble. They're in the time of trouble, God's the only one. He's writing in Psalm 32, 7. You are my hiding place. He writes. He sees a deer pan passing by him. He's keeping the eye on the bear. He's keeping his eye on the lion. But all of a sudden, a deer, a gazelle runs past him. He gets out his pen and he says, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul. He's writing all these songs. Uh, on the backside. Then he looks on the hill and he sees a cattle. He saw a hill uh, and he said, wait a minute, the cattle, he sees a thousand hills at one time and he writes in Psalm 50, the cattle on that thousand hill belong to God. He's just writing songs. Ain't nobody printing the book. Ain't nobody buying his tape. He just say, if I were hungry, I would not tell you. Then, furthermore, he looks at his own sin and he writes a song about his own sin. When the last time you wrote a song about your sin that goes like this, have mercy upon me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness, plot out my transgression of everything. I brag about what I I did right last year, but God blot out everything that I offended you in. Sins of omission and commission created me a clean heart. That's the greatest psalm that any psalmist could sing is Psalm 51. Because if you're not sung Psalm 51, you are not a psalmist. Uphold me with thy free spirit. I'm willing. I'm willing, God. Free. Psalm is I'll be doing stuff. Don't tell nobody I said it. Free. With thy free spirit. That means willing. Which means, yeah, the, uh, the, the labor's worth of his hire. But if you don't pay me, I'm still born free. Jesus came to the earth free. And he had the goods. And they didn't even pay him. Matter of fact, they paid him, all right. You know what they paid him? No attention. That's what they paid him. So if we just go back, if our preachers, our Levites, our intercessors, our musicians can just learn Psalm 51, purge me with hyssop, wash me. Don't let me take the filth of my own agenda into 2022 and mess up your kingdom. <laughs> he writes another song. 
And this prophet heals it, hears it. He says in Psalm 61, when my heart is overwhelmed. Y'all, I don't know if you realize or not, but these next years, last years, I've been overwhelming. Lead me to the rock that is higher. He keeps on writing. He writes in Psalm 75. He said, I need a promotion, but ain't that moving? I'm in a box. I'm stuck. Don't, nobody's recognizing me. So he writes another psalm. He says, promotion coming not from the east, nor the west, nor the south, but God is the one. That's my promoter. Oh, I wish I had time. I'm preaching, Ben, y'all. Sing. Amen. And then he finally writes in Psalm 84 and said, how amiable are thy tabernacles. Uh, my soul thanks for the courts of the Lord. My my heart and my flesh cries out to the living God. One last song. Maybe you know this one. Make a joyful noise, all ye land, Beulah land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Uh, come before his presence. That's the way you feel, David. So the prophet with prophetic eyes knew that David had that kind of mentality. And so he's walking out the door. But God knows what's in you. And he turns back and he says, do you have anybody else? He said, I got David, but he's not on this short list. Bring him to me. Before he can get in the room, the oil starts bubbling. I got to get ready to close this thing. This is the year of the ring. You ain't got a call yet. Nobody's called your name. You ain't even got no advertisement yet. No home box. Nobody want to pay to see you do nothing yet. But I, I decree that you will never be forsaken. Watch this. David therefore departed. I'll have to complete this. And escaped. Somebody type it. To the cave. That's a hole of Adullam, Agilam, some call And then his brethren, as I get ready to close, and his father's house heard it. They heard it. They, they went down thither. Yes, watch your relatives. They went down thither with him. So David's in a cave. Have you ever been in a cave before and your family want to try to pull you out and they try to join him? But watch this. I'm getting ready to close this thing here. I'm getting ready to close. I didn't go everywhere I wanted to go, but I feel like the Lord said get ready to land him. And every one that was uh, watch this. He was there. And every one that was in, here are the three D's, what? Distress, not, not half, not, no, everyone that was in what? Distress, everyone that was, here's the three D's, everyone that was what? In debt, and everyone that was what? That's what's getting ready to happen to you in 22, 1 Samuel 22. God is about to put an oil on your debt, your distress, and all of your discontent. Oh, I wish I had time. Uh, he got there in that with them. And I love what the verb says. Uh, and, and everyone that was in discontent, he gathered themselves unto him. And he became, watch this, he became, watch this, a captain over them. Boy, that's some strong language. He became a captain. You know, it's hard to lead discontented people. They don't want a captain. He had to prove that he was one of them. Most of the time, all we're trying to do is green room ourselves and gather people that's got some. But you'll know you on your way when you, like Moses, can refuse the palace, you like David, and can get in a cave or in a box and not only separate yourself from your family, but be a captain and get in the same stuff they're in. And not forsake them just because they're down. This is what I mean by never forsaken. I'll continue in this passage and I'll close. Uh, I got so many other notes when I knew this would be a month message. But in Hebrews 13, 5, God say, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And the Hebrew says, the Greek says of that in Hebrews 13, 5, I will never I will never, I will not, I will not, three times. The Holy Spirit, three times. Just like we got Two twos. Two, that's one two. Zero, two, and then there's another two. There are three twos. It's the year of not only the double portion, it's not 2021, it's the year of three twos. This is the anointing of the triple portion, the fullness of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So in Hebrews 13, 5, Amplified, God said, I will never leave you. 
I will never forsake you. The Greek gives the implication forsake you being even when you're down. The worst time you can walk away from somebody is when they're down. The country is down. The economy is down. Preachers are down. Believers are down and depressed. Finances are down. Sometimes people's attendance is down. And God says, that's when I make the promise, I will never forsake you. I got to wait until I get you back up. At least wait until they get back up and then walk away. God said, I will not. I will not in any degree amplify. I will not in any degree. Can I see that in Amplified? And I'll look at this last passage and we'll close on this passage. We'll call it a night. When God says, I will not in any circumstances be content with what you have. He, God, he, God, himself on the screen has said, I will not in any way fail you or give you up nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not in any degree leave you three times when you're down. I will never, it consists, consists, goes on to say, relax my hold on you. Because it's like if you had a child that stepped off the bank of a river or swimming pool and they were going down. I think what you would do if they were drowning, guess what? You would grab their hand tighter and pull them back up. And I've come to tell you now that God himself stepped down from heaven and the earth, got in the cave of earth with us and did not leave us until he pulled us back up. First Samuel, let me close this. The whole dog. The entrapment, the being boxed in, can't get back to work. Last year, I told you out of Luke 21, God said that the, the, the epidemic would continue. I am pleased to announce to you from the throne of God that when we get to December 31st, 2022, we would not be in the same place that we're in right now. If you would experience the Hephzibah and the Beulah land, if you will walk around your house and call it Beulah land, walk around your car, walk around the campus, walk around the military base, walk around your business, walk around your children, walk around your community and name it Beulah land. Singers get ready. As I close here, get ready. Let's close this thing out. And everyone that was in debt, everyone, everyone that was in debt, everyone that was discontent, dissatisfied, he gathered them unto himself. And he became a captain over them. There's a cola. What does that mean, a captain? He became a captain over them. And there were with him about, what, 400. 400. He had 4,000. He had 4,000. <laughs> the people that you see successful, you don't see no 20,000. You see him meeting needs, 5,000, 20,000. But whenever God helped somebody, it was always like Gideon. It was just 400. It was just 300. You may not have a $400. Maybe you ain't got 32,000. About 400. Come right on, singers. That was 400 with him. There was just 400 of them in that church. <laughs> just 400. But he was teaching them how to fight. He became a captain. You can't be a captain over misfits. He's a captain. He was raising up an army. Can I tell you that while you're in the cave, God's teaching you how to fight. God's teaching you how to box. God's teaching you in a boxing match. If the enemy can't knock you out, he'll just start throwing what they call rabbit punches. Just, just hit you in the midsection. Just can't hit your head, can't get your head because you got your hands up. So they start scoring. Every time they hit them in the side, it's like a little jab. And, so, and the judges score. Every time they call jabbing, little jab. Can't knock you out. He's trying to knock you out, but he can't kill you. He's just been throwing those jabs at you. But Muhammad Ali said, just lay on the ropes while he's jabbing you. Because if he had won, you wouldn't be standing here praising God right now. If he had won, you wouldn't be here saying, hallelujah, he's worthy. If he had won, 
you wouldn't be in the ring balancing your life balancing your family life balancing taking care of parents and still got to bring to others while you cry between tears because you're still in the fight he's teaching you how to box but sometimes he can hit you so much and he think you ain't got nothing left and you get to the 12th round and you go to the corner the cornerstone and they give you a squig of the anointing of God. And somehow in your right arm, you hit him so hard, he falls down to the canvas because he didn't expect you to survive the fight. He didn't expect you to survive the divorce. He didn't expect you to survive the abuse, the fire. He thought that one took you out. But you just leaned on Jesus. You kept on singing. You kept on working. You kept on serving. You kept on taking little of nothing, working with what you got. 400 of them. I'm just about through. Get ready for your first fruit offering. It will be all inclusive. It will cover three areas of your life. Debt, discontent, and distress. Persecuted, but not distressed. Watch this. Get ready, singers. I'm about to toss it to you. I know you got a song here now. Next verse on this New Year's. And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab and he said unto the king of Moab let my father and my mother I pray thee let them come forth and I'm gonna let them be with you because I got some business to take care because this fight I'm in I got to train some people I got to let somebody else I got to put them in another place but I got to lead them into somebody that can take care of them I'm going to leave them with you. Now, I love this last phrase, and I'm coming out of here. He says, I want you to keep them there and let them be with you. Next phrase. I want them to be with you. Till what now? Oh, my God. Here's the punchline. Until, I'm going to drop the mic, until I know what God is getting ready to do for me. Sometimes, you got to leave blood in another place. Sometimes uh, you got to leave preachers and friends in another place. Because at this place, I'm trying to figure out in 2022 what God is getting ready to do for me. Oh, I dare you. I see you shaking your head. I dare you to lift your hand and say, I'm just waiting until I know. I need to know. I can't be guessing. I need to know. I will not go into 2022. I've been taking care of everybody else. I've been taking care of sheep. I've been taking care of everybody else's business. I've been praying for everybody else. I've been prophesying to everybody else. I've been singing to everybody else. I've been serving everybody else. I've been interceding. But tonight, I'm not going into 22 stumbling I need to know watch this he keeps going I'm just about through and he brought them before the king Moab and they dwelt with him all the while that David well now he was just in the hold he was just in the box. He was in a stronghold with nothing moving. But what you need is people that can be with you while your life is on hold. The Amplified calls it the stronghold. I'm just about to get your offering ready while they went the hole. Next line for me. I'm just about through. Never forsaken. And here's what's next. How you gonna know what he's gonna do for you? You better have a prophet in your midst. And the prophet Gad, which means a troop. Judah means a praise, but a prophet is an army all by himself. The prophet Gad said unto David. You may be in the hole for a moment. <laughs> you may be in the hole. <laughs> what now, Cassandra? <laughs> Get thee into the land of Judah. 
because when you come out of the hold uh, you ought to come out with the praise uh, let the music begin to rise uh, when you come out you better not come out bitter you better come out with a better praise uh, if your life has been on hold if your money has been on hold open your mouth as these singles get ready to break the stronghold and type in I'm coming out of the hold uh, I'm coming out of the hold uh, I'm get ready to sing fast forward and when he came out of the hole can i tell you where he went in first samuel 30 it says he came to ziklag uh, and when he came out of the hole he found that the whole city was burned down with fire that the women had been taken captive uh, and he asked god the question tonight uh, shall i pursue and god said get ready to go lord for without fail uh, you will recover all when you get to 1 Samuel 30, 18, uh, the Bible said, uh, and they recovered all. Uh, will somebody lift your hands up uh, in 2022, knowing that this is the year of the ring? This is the year of the covenant. This is the year of the fight. Uh, I turn it over to these singers. Uh, as you get ready to lift your hands up, uh, send the worship. Uh, send the worship. Uh, send the worship. You're coming out of the land. But come out with the praise in your mouth. Come on, Judah. Open your mouth and begin to bless him. Now.
I shall. And I shall preach we go. Come on, Judah. Come on. It's a brand new year. It's a brand new year. I say it's a brand new year. And it's the day that the Lord hath made. Uh, forgetting those things that are behind me. Reaching forth to the things that lie ahead. Thank God. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Come on, mothers. Come on, fathers. Come on, church. Salt of the earth. Light of the world. We give you glory. We give you glory. Right where you are, maybe you stumbled through live streaming. Somebody texts you, hashtag you, and you said, I've been in a hold. I've been in a cave that's been a stronghold in my mind. And when you fast forward that story over to 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5, it gives a stronghold as being a part of the mind. It says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. But this time the stronghold is not a physical cave. It's the cavity between your two ears. It's your thoughts casting down every imagination, every high thing that had exalted itself against the knowledge of God that told you the bird with broken feathers would never fly as high. Will you take a moment right now to ask God to forgive you of yesterday's sin, to give you a brand new start as you come before the throne of grace? Will you ask God to take his blood to cleanse you and to wash you? and get you ready for everything that he has that's been on hold, that's been in the layaway. And even though for a while what you've been going through, it's not that you're so deep and so eccentric, but sometimes those in flesh and blood, because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, sometimes they just don't get it. The Bible says when you talk to God, how be in the spirit, no man understandeth him. Sometimes people just don't understand you. They ain't trying not to, but God understands. So if you'll repent of your sins and start this year all over again and say, I'm getting ready to start all over again. I want you to prepare even on Sunday. I'll be doing a message call. Let's get it started in here. How do we get started? I want you to tune in. It's going to be a blessing to you. It'll teach you how to get your life started all over again. I'm getting ready. We're going out with a shout and with a praise. Uh, there's a number on the screen, 73256. 73256. Empty Sears, I've already taught you how to seek first things. Get your first fruit offering. Amen. Or payment toward it in your hand. You don't have to wait till Sunday to drive through. You can do that now. Everyone ought to get ready right now. What call the year of the ring. The ring. The, somebody's ring. Somebody's calling me. Somebody's getting ready to connect to me. In this case, God is marrying the land. Uh, he's putting a ring on the land. If you like it and you love it, put a ring on it. God put a ring on the land. Amen. He's got a covenant with it. So, Father, I thank you right now for the discipline to deal with hardships so they can prepare us for what we're getting ready to. Right now, just make that. Don't even wait to it. Go ahead and start sending those tithes those offerings and the rest of it we'll do when we have service let's get started Sunday 10 o'clock then the first communion of the year I would strongly admonish you not to miss that first things are vitally important uh, you know the apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians for this cause many are weak many sick many die for communion I'm sorry that's that's just what he said is sometimes we don't get better because we we underestimate we don't discern the importance of spiritual things that's important and he said as often as you do this do this in remembrance of me so lord willing we'll see you don't know what the rain or not rain uh we like the post from marines don't matter after all you're gonna be in your car so come on through uh and, and pass by uh, first communion of the year take bread take communion and we'll take it from there we get ready to go out of here with a praise uh happy new year blessed new year these singers get ready to take out with a shout with the joy seven three two five six know that satan is defeated his darkness is dispelled and jesus christ is lord over 2022 and god will never leave you and he'll never forsake you he'll never relax his hold god bless you 
and good evening. Don't forget about the midnight service, communion at 12 on Facebook, 12 noon. Tune in at 12 noon, I mean 12 midnight, 12 midnight. Midnight, get up and give God some praise and hear a powerful word right here on Facebook, YouTube. Just about, about three and a half hours or less. God bless you.